Alley with Potomac Beads, and I'm going to teach you how to do a little bit more complicated right angle weave design as we create the Wimbledon bracelet. It looks like a fine jewelry piece, and I'm really excited for you to learn and perfect that multi-row right angle stitch. So to begin our design, we're going to be doing two rows of right angle weave that are two drop or using two beads. So we are going to be building a series of boxes, one row, and then I'm gonna show you how to build the second row on. And each box is going to contain eight C beads. That middle row is gonna be both considered on row number one and row number two as we add the two together. We're then going to decorate those two and embellish them. And then we're gonna do some square stitch and some right angle weave along the back to make that pop up. To begin, I have some .006 wildfire beading thread, and if you don't already know right angle weave, I would watch one of our right angle weave videos first, and that will give you an idea exactly how to do the stitch before going in and doing multiple rows in the two drop. What you're going to want to do, and I just have a short piece of thread here, you're going to end up adding thread unless you want to start with about 12 feet of thread. I usually like to use about five feet my max and then I, don't, I add thread on, so I will show how to do that in this project. To begin, I wanna think of a box, four sides. Each side of my box is going to pertain, or contain two beads. I put eight beads onto my thread and needle and I'm so, going to sew back through the first six beads and sew out. When I sew back through these six beads, I'm going to start to establish that the two beads that I didn't go through are my base or the bottom of my box. The last two beads that I went through are the right hand side, the next two up are the top, and then the first two are the left hand side of the box. Coming out the box on the bottom right hand side here, I'm going to add two more beads that are going to be my next bottom, two beads for the right hand side two beads to the top, and then what is currently the right-hand side of this box is gonna become the left-hand side of the next. So I have six more beads on. I'm going to sew into the top of the two beads that my thread are currently coming out of, and down. Now I always need to get over to that right side, so I'm gonna sew down through, through excuse me, the two beads that are at the bottom, and then I always wanna be coming out of that right side of my box. So I'm gonna sew through the two beads that are on the right and I'm coming out the top. You'll notice with right angle weave that you're constantly alternating with each box, whether or not it's to the top or the bottom of the design. So here I have again, six more beads going on. This time, the first two will be the top, then the right side, then two more for the bottom. I'm gonna sew into the opposite side of wherever your thread is coming out of and right away, that right side of the last box becomes the left side of the current box you're working on. From here, I need to sew over so that I'm coming out those two beads on the right-hand side. I'm gonna sew through the two beads that sit at the top. And then remember, I wanna come out those side beads, so I'm gonna sew down through those two beads on the side. This time I'm at the bottom. Six more beads go on, two that are gonna be the bottom two that are gonna be the right side of the box, and two that are gonna to be to the top of the box. What was the right side of the last box, as I sew through from the top, are gonna to become the left side of my new box. Again, to do my next piece, I need to get over to that right-hand side. So I'm gonna sew through the two bottom beads. And then again, you always wanna come out of those two beads that are on the right side. You're gonna continue building this the whole length of your wrist. Now I say the whole length of your wrist because it's going to be puffed up a little bit, but by the time you add that half inch or so, about three fourths of an inch with your clasp, that'll give you enough space. Once you have one long strip done, I'm gonna show you how to add this second row on. So you're gonna finish off and it's just gonna look like one strip like that, box after box after box. After completing that one long strip of box, we're gonna add a second row of boxes to sit below. Once you have about 32 to 40 boxes, depending on your wrist size, 
I'm gonna show you how to add your second row on. So just imagine this little piece here that's six long is actually that 32 long. When you're coming out of your last bead here, now I'm coming out the right side as if I'm getting ready to add another box on, but I'm at the end of the row and I just want to add another piece on. What you're gonna do is sew through the two beads that are at the top or the bottom, doesn't matter whichever way your thread's going, I'm going to sew through those two top beads and come on out. So now I'm to the top of the box rather than to the right side. I'm going to add six more beads because these two beads that were the top of this box that I'm on are becoming the bottom of the box that we're adding. So I'm going to do two beads for the left side of the box, two beads for the top of the box, and two beads for the right of the box. So into what is that bottom of the box there, from the other side, and out. And you can see that gets me now into another box formation. I want to string and sew through the two left hand beads here, because again, I want to keep adding on to my row. Now I'm going to flip this, so that way, just like we've been doing, I'm always coming out the right hand side of the box. So I'm coming out the two right hand side beads of the box and I'm gonna add two more beads for the bottom of the next box, two more beads for the right side of the next box, and then I'm gonna go through the two beads from the right angle weave unit above it, which was the bottom of the box and now is gonna become the top of my box that I'm working on. So you're adding four beads at a time after that initial six. You can see that creates another box. I need to come down through my beads on that left-hand side, just like I normally was, and now I need to work through my thread. So I'm coming out again, the right-hand beads of the box that I just completed. Coming out that right-hand bead of the box, I'm out those two beads, you're gonna see that there's another box next to you. When you look at it, you're gonna say, all right, I have the top of the box here, I just need the right and the bottom. So to get to the right and the bottom, I want you to sew through the two beads from the box above it, which is now gonna become the top of the box that I'm working on. Four more beads go on, two for the right, two for the base, and then once again, sewing up through that, what is now the left side of my box. Same deal when I'm here, I need to get over to that right side. So I'm gonna go through the two beads that sit to the top of the box, and then as well, through the two beads that sit on the right. Now remember, every time you go, you're either gonna to be to the top or the bottom of those right-hand side beads. From here, you can grab out a couple more beads, I'll do two more with you here. You're coming out the right hand side, add two beads for the bottom of the box, two beads for the right of the box. The top of the box is already there. You're gonna grab the two beads from the box that sits above, which are now gonna be the top of the current box you're working on. Sew down through that beads that are now on the left side of our new box. And then same deal here, I need to get over to the right two beads go through the base, and go through the right two beads. When you look at the right two beads here, you know, you still need to add four more beads, but the top's already there. So I just need to sew through the top of my new box, add two beads for my right, two beads for the bottom, and then up through what is now the left-hand side of the box. Same deal, get over to the right side of the box, sewing through the ceiling, and then down the two beads on the right hand side. You're gonna continue this till you get your whole entire second row. So just like magic here, I have that whole entire second row done. And you can see right here, I'm running out of thread. So I'm gonna show you how I can go in and add more thread. You can see here what I need to do is go through the top two beads there from the box above create the box beads on the left, create them on the bottom, and sew back through on the right there. I always prefer to talk about the box from the right-hand side, so I'm gonna sew away from me as I connect. 
Right now, what I'm gonna show you is how to add some more thread. If you get towards the end of the piece and you don't have enough thread on to do your embellishment. So I've cut a new piece of thread and I need to attach it to this strip of my right angle weave, this two rows. And what I'm going to do is tie a new piece of thread onto the old piece of thread that's already here. When I tie the new piece of thread onto the old piece of thread, the nice thing is that because I'm embellishing the top or this will be to the bottom, I don't have to worry too much about seeing the knot. I'm gonna take the new piece of thread, which again, I like to work with about four and a half to five foot pieces of thread, and I'm going to knot the new piece of thread around the old piece of thread. Once I have that knot securely there, I'm gonna push it down against my uh, beads that I have on there. Taking those two thread ends now, I'm gonna tie the two thread ends into a knot and push down towards the beads. From here, I'll take my needle and thread off of the one, take my thread burner, burn down the thread edges just the littlest a bit. And now if you need to, if you haven't already, take your needle and thread and attach that needle to the new piece of thread. Once I attach my needle to the new piece of thread, I'm gonna pull that through a little bit so I have a little bit of a tail, and then I'm ready to go to create. Again, coming out here, I'm right at the top of this right angle unit. I need to sew over through the top two, through the two that are gonna be my right side, the two that are my base, and then up through those two that my thread were coming out of, right near that knot. Finishing off then this right angle unit, I'm going to sew into those top two because I need to get over towards the right hand side. Remember, always, always towards the right. And then down through the two on the right because I'm always coming out those right hand beads. From here, I'm gonna add my last little box to this unit. Four more beads go on. I'm gonna sew into the beads right there at my starting unit. Down through the beads here on what is now the left-hand side. You can see how much longer it takes to pull all that thread through. Through the beads at the base. And then just like I was going to go in and add another row of beads, I'm gonna come out on the right-hand side. When I'm out the right-hand side now, what I'm gonna do is come back the whole line of the piece and embellish along the top. Just like this one has the silver-lined crystal and then the Colorado two millimeter bicone, I'm gonna use the uh, 15-0 in the silver-lined crystal and then the two millimeter in the crystal AB. I want you to add to your thread and needle coming out that right side a 15, one of your crystal bicones, and a 15. Coming out that top right hand side, I'm gonna stay on that same box, but I'm going into the bottom of the left hand side and then up towards the top. You wanna make sure when you're embellishing that all of these beads stay to the top of the boxes. You can see now it's just on automatic repeat. I'm again at the top of my next box getting ready to add my embellishment. 15 then a crystal, then a 15. Once those are on there, I'm gonna go to the left-hand side of the same box, and I'm gonna go from the bottom towards the top. Right angle weave is so, so easy to embellish, nice and easy to get your design in there. And you can even switch up if you don't want that same look to it. I have two out of my 32 boxes done. I have to go down these 32, and then I'll show you how we're gonna come back up through the 32 that sit above and embellish them as well. So we have that nice embellishment to the top and bottom of our right angle units. Once you get to the end of embellishing row number one there, that bottom row, you're coming out the left-hand side just like you've been doing, which is now gonna be the top of the next box, but there's no box there. We need to get to the other row of our right angle weave. 
Now one thing, what I want to make sure is that my crystals are facing in the same direction. I don't want them facing in a V. You can do that. It's up to you. But for me, I want them facing in a nice line, which can also make for really fun color crystal mixes if you want to. So when I go in and do these crystals coming the opposite way, I want to make sure that they're also on that angle from the top right to the bottom left. Coming out here, I need to get to the other section of my right angle weave. And what I'm going to do is sew into the right angle, continuing on. So I'm sewing into the top of that last crystal box. Then I'm going to sew into that right side there. Going to sew into the top. And you can see I'm just getting my needle right in position. So that way I can make that same diagonal stitch along the bottom. So here at the top I have that stitch coming along. And then as I come along that stitch here, I'm going to go down through the side and then I'm in position to go ahead and start embellishing my second row. To embellish my second row now, in the previous row we were starting on the right hand side and going to the bottom left. Now I'm starting on the bottom left and I'm going to embellish to the top right, adding on my 15, then one of my crystal bicones, then one of my 15s, and I'm coming out again, bottom left, I'm going to go into top right and down. When you come down, the only tricky thing that you want to make sure of is that your thread does not get caught anywhere in that thread line along the side. So now I'm going to continue on that angle, coming out the bottom left, sewing into the top right, and adding my second row of my crystals in. Once you're exiting through your last embellishment here, you're right near that stop bead, just kind of push it out of the way. I am going to get ready to do the baseline. Now the baseline, and you don't have to, I should stop there. Um, if you want to, you can actually be done at this point, attach your clasp and good to go. What I'm gonna be doing is one more right angle weave unit with two versions here of just a uh, ladder stitch basically connecting the two sides. And you can see how much that makes it kind of three-dimensional and sit up really, really pretty. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is add my clasp to this one side because once I come back down, I don't want to have to come back to add the clasp and I didn't leave myself enough room. So I have on her clasp here, Cheryl has a magnetic clasp. I'm going to be using, and, and Cheryl finished off this guy for me, I'm going to be doing an easy elements clasp here, and this is the hex clasp. You can see how pretty that is on the design. What I want you to do is grab a wire guard or a wire protector, and I'm going to grab a silver one, obviously, because I have silver going on, and coming out right here in between the two rows. So I'm coming out between the two rows there. I want you to add one 11 seed bead. Grab your wire guard or your wire protector and come up through the one side of the wire protector. Come down the other side of the wire protector or wire guard. And then don't forget to add in your clasp. I'm going to take my clasp apart and just add the lighter end right now since I have to hold on to it. Make sure this goes up into that little wire guard and that your thread is still inside the piece. I'm going to come down through that same 11 OC bead and I'm going to go over towards the second row of my right angle weave. So this 11-0 basically is going to sit in between the right angle weave. Again, as you're doing it, you can even do just a little pinch. I'm going to pinch this a tiny bit so the ends almost match there and it makes a tighter fit. From here, I'm going to go to the exterior or the outside of that right angle weave unit. I'm now on the exterior of the right angle weave unit. I'm going to flip it over. And what we're going to be grabbing on is basically the top and the bottom of the right angle units. We're going to add on to the top here and add on to the bottom. I want to add two more seed beads and I'm going to sew back through the two that my thread is coming out of. And that lays those two right over top there. Go back through the two you just added which is going to bring your needle and thread towards that exterior line. From here, we're going to do some right angle weave. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, 
five and six beads. I already have two there. They're going to become the top of my right angle unit. And I'm going to sew through those two beads to round that out. Coming down through, I'm going to sew down through the right hand side of my box. And then I'm going to sew down through the bottom of the box. When I'm through the bottom of the box here, I'm going to catch on to the two beads that sit from the embellished right angle weave above it. So you can see kind of how you're grabbing on there, those two beads on the side. Sewing through there, and then back through the two I just had. Give a nice tight pull, and that first connection point is finished. Now, each time we do the connection point, we are going to have a new set of right angle weave that we're adding, and then we're going to basically connect to that. So you can see those four, that little box there. I'm going to sew into that box through my first bead on the side. And I'm coming out, ready, I'm going to flip it. What is now my right side of that right angle weave? Coming out the right side of the right angle weave, I'm going to act like I'm doing a new section of right angle weave, but I'm going to put my first two beads on, go into the two beads that sit from the exterior of the right angle weave below it, sew through those two beads, back through the same two beads that you just added, so you're doing that little ladder stitch section there. Give a nice tight pull to help it sit up a little bit. Two more beads go on now for the right side. Two more beads for the top. When I'm here at the two beads on the top, I'm going to sew through the two beads that sit on the box from the original right angle weave. I'm sewing from the left hand side towards the right hand side which is going to lay those two kind of right over top. So back through those two that become the right next angle weave, weave unit. Give a nice tight pull and then sew over the right angle weave till I'm coming out the right hand side. So basically as you do the top and the bottom of your new boxes, you're going to be adding that little square stitch on to the sides. I'm going to do it one more time with you. My thread's coming out now, the right hand side of the new right angle unit that I'm adding. I'm going to add two beads and then see those two beads that sit at the top of the box from the base units. I'm going to sew through them from the right side towards the left back towards the clasp. Going in, I'm going to sew back through those two beads that I just added. And if this is tricky for you and you don't quite get it, make a third row of right angle weave and then you can just quick square stitch it together. From here I'm going to add two more beads, which are going to be the right side of my new box. And then I'm going to add two more for the bottom of this right angle weave. When I add the two beads for the bottom, I'm going to sew from the right hand side towards the left hand side. So I'm going from the right towards the left of the two beads that sit in the base right angle unit. Again, through the two beads that I just added. Nice tight pull. And then complete my right angle weave through the beads on the left. And there you have it. So there's that next right angle weave box right there. So through the top. Sew through the beads on the right, and you have your little box there, your little right angle weave box finished. See it there? And now we're going to do our ladder stitch again. So two more beads go on. These are going to be for the bottom of this next box. And I'm also going to sew through the two beads that sit below from that right angle unit. So back through those two beads that I just added, which are the bottom of the right angle weave box that I'm working on. Two more beads for the right hand side. 
two more beads for the top. And then same deal here. We're going to sew through those two beads from the left towards the right, which may seem a little bit counterintuitive, and it's going to make the beads kind of come over on a diagonal. See that little diagonal there that's creating until you sew through those two beads that become the top of the box here? It sits on that diagonal. Once you square stitch on those two beads there, it goes back into its box formation. I'm going to come down then the left, what is now the left hand side of the box, the original two beads that I was adding on. Again then sew through the bottom of the box and onto the right hand side of the box. And there you have it. So you start to get a whole nother row of that right angle weave. See how it's right there along the bottom? You get that whole nother row of the right angle weave along with that square stitch or that ladder stitch there along the sides from both the top and the bottom. So as you're doing this, what's going to happen is it's going to start to curve a little bit and that middle line sits up. As the middle line sits up then, you have that nice three-dimensional beading going on. I'm going to reinforce the clasp with this thread end. If you don't have a thread end left, back when you went in and you did your clasp, make sure to go through there one more time. I'm going to go down the entire length of the bracelet, adding in another set of my right angle weave along with my uh, square stitches or my ladder stitch, depending on kind of which way you're looking at it on the top and the bottom along the bracelet. As you work along the back, you can see how it really makes the front kind of sit up. It adds a lot more volume to it, and it really has a nice feel along the back. Just to show one more time, I'm coming out through that right angle weave unit right there, right through those two beads along the bottom. I'm gonna add two more beads, and whether or not you're coming out the top or the bottom, you're going to sew from the two beads that sit from the base unit down towards the clasp, then back through the two beads that you just added. That in my case right here is going to be the ceiling of the right angle unit in the back. I add four more beads on the second go. Catch on the two beads that sit at the bottom of the right angle unit from the baseline. Sewing again from the clasp, towards the finishing area, back through those two beads, and then finish up the right angle unit. Sewing back through that left hand side, through the top, through the bottom, on the right hand side. And that finishes up that perfect little eight bead square along with attaching and adding on the beads along the outer edge. So I'm about halfway done through my bracelet. You can see how much of kind of a finished look that makes it. It makes it a lot thicker along the edge. And then when you wear it, it just has that nice, nice heaviness to it and that nice polished look. I think adding the back really does make a difference in the design and just in its look with all of that silver and crystal. Once you're done coming out the last of your little right angle weave on the back there, you can see your nice little box. I want you to come out just as if you're getting ready to add the next piece. And what I want you to do is from the back here, I want you to step up through those two beads there that are the sides of the box. So these are going to be the sides that your crystals went through. I want you to go through coming towards the center, joining basically the back to the front and just go through to start those first two beads and out. So you're coming out between the two rows of your crystals. When you're coming out between the two rows of your crystals, just like we did on the other side, you're going to add one of your 11 OC beads. Should have grabbed another wire guard out. Get my box here, grab another wire guard out. And this time we get to add the clasp to it. And I want to make sure as I added that the clasp is sitting upright and have that nice crystal hex. Add your wire guard come down through the opposite side of the wire guard, which is going to be through that little loop there if you're unfamiliar with wire guards. Once you're down through there, like I did with the other side, I'm just going to kind of pinch it a tiny bit. Put my clasp on going from the bottom towards the top. 
go back through that 11 OC bead and then go through the next two 11s on the back side there, or on the front side rather, excuse me. Now to reinforce, we can see how that clasp sits there. To reinforce, putting it over, I'm going to link on to those two beads that sit in that last right angle weave unit along the back. Pull those nice and tight and reinforce one more time. So when I go into the other side and I reinforce the little uh, tongue of the clasp, I'm gonna do the same thing. Adding those two sides together, it'll start to look kind of like a triangle there. You can see it. And that's, you're just going to make sure that you have at least two to three times the thread attaching the clasp. You don't wanna do more than three times because what happens then sometimes is that you open the sides of the wire guard. It's not soldered here where I'm through right now. So you don't wanna go more than three times because it starts to get tight. So three is kind of your max as you come down through the side of the wire guard, back through, and then back down through the 11 as well. Through to the opposite side of your clasp and through your 11 OC beads. And when you get to the other side then of the 11 OC beads, come on to the back through those two beads that sit on the far right hand side of your right angle unit, and then sew back a couple rows. As you sew back a couple rows, you can pull up some of the bridge threads, the threads connecting. I'm sewing underneath the bridge thread there. I'm gonna sew through the loop that I created once and twice, do a little sewer's knot there. Pull that knot nice and tight between that right angle weave in the back, and then sew through some more C beads. Again, on the other side, I'll go back, put a needle and thread on my little tail that I left, and put another strand of thread through. Just like here on the back, I'm running down through the right angle weave a couple passes. I'll do one more knot. And then after I do that one more knot, sew through the next couple beads. You can see this kind of like speed beading here to finish it off. And then once I have that finished off, again, sew through another set of beads. So that way it pulls the knot kind of in towards those beads. Once you have it there, burn down your thread edge, and anywhere that you added thread, you can make sure to burn down those thread edges as well. When you're burning down your thread edge, you wanna make sure you don't burn any of the other threads involved. Once you're finished and done them, you have this beautiful Wimbledon bracelet. And it really does sparkle and shine like crazy, whether or not you're using the gold or the silver, they look like fine jewelry that you just went to the jewelers and paid a fortune for. As always, thanks so much for joining me in the creation of these Wimbledon bracelets. Remember when you're looking at this style of right angle weave, there are tons of modifications that you can do. If you don't like working with 11 O's, switch it to some eights and put a four millimeter crystal in the middle rather than the two millimeter. If you don't want it to lay out in the back, you can just do the regular two rows of the right angle weave. You can also check out some of the other bracelets that we have with right angle weave. If you wanna check out the Grecian as well, that goes on a diagonal. And then also you can check out the Gatsby if you want to learn how to expand that right angle weave skill. As always, comment below and let us know which color is your favorite or which design you're going to do for your own Wimbledon bracelet. Remember also, in addition to commenting, you can give a little thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe so that way you get regular updates from us here at Potomac Beads. Hopefully this video has inspired you, has made you think outside of that box and really get a chance to look through some of your stash, your supplies, and come up with your own Wimbledon bracelet. Thanks so much for watching and happy beading.